inform you whatever you're waking up from and you had a lovely restorative night as always it's a beautiful day wednesday where we focus our eyes on global matters foreign policy geopolitics diplomacy and security a big day for south africa today when they go to the polls and it seems after 30 good years, ANC does not really stand a chance, according to many analysts and, pan and uh, panelists. And of course, also the polls indicating that the coalition of parties might be becoming a very strong contender in this election. What does it portend for the tenure of uh, President Ramaphosa after 30 good years, of course, of ANC as well? Is it time now to upset the apricot? We shall be looking at that as well. And the advance team that went to Haiti is back. That is the Kenya police that went to Haiti now is back. We know that the preparations there are not really shaken into place as far as deployment is concerned. They're not ready looking at the camps as well. We shall give you greater details of this. And that also is a catnip issue here in the country. We shall be analyzing that moving forward as well. We still continue to analyze some of the goodies, so to speak, that came from the US. And one of the issues that we will also be navel gazing on is the issue of the key non ally of NATO that Kenya has been designated by the US, waiting, of course, for the approval of Congress. And we shall discuss that as well. Burkina Faso has extended the rulership of the the military there for the next five years. Was a, does it pretend for the country as well? All right, Mogaka also continue to be a big issue in the country. Or we look at the moral high ground of that as well. Where do you now draw the line between morality and economy, which takes precedence as far as that is concerned? Remember also the president will be meeting the governors from the coastal region as well. But let's see how the weather will be today. Right, let's put this horse into a full run by looking at the dailies today. Fresh off the press is a standard today with Mount Kenya. From Uhuru's frying pan to root of fire, 
That is what is the splash today. Bed of thorns at the height of the political wars and 2022 election campaigns. Then DP William Ruto, let me try and zoom in. And allies accused then President Uru Kenyatta of many years. But now, as head of state, Ruto is facing the very same accusations. Uh, we have also that story well fleshed out for you on page four of the standard today. Due to 2018 deal between Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Odinga, Ruto Alas accused a former president of sucking up to the opposition chief. But Raila is now welcoming Ruto's state function and even is, even sits with visiting heads of state. When it comes to politics, the former president was accused of negating Yangu Kumi, Yaruto Kumi, 10 for Uhuru, 10 for Ruto mantra, and working with Raila, thereby painting the Aye Koyo uh, selfish and self-centered. Yeah, hints that DP regarding a Shagwa may not be an automatic running mate on 2027. Look at the coffee sector. Kenya Kwanza accused the Uhuru administration of running down the coffee sector due to what they claimed as family-related interests. Today, coffee farmers have no minimum guaranteed returns and debts are soaring, payments delayed and Mira and Mwoka farmers facing bans. High cost of living, Ruto and Allah's accused Uru of triggering the high cost of living as a result of Finance Bill 2018, which they claimed increased fuel prices. Kenyans are still complaining of high fuel costs and introduction of hefty taxes. On demolitions, former President Uru Kenyatta was accused of insensitivity and acting inhumanely. During demolitions at Mokoro Kwanjenga slums on December 27th, 2021. Now, the Ruto government is on the spot of demolitions in Gikomba, Madare, and Mukuru. On development, Uru was accused of neglecting Mount Kenya in favor of projects in opposition strongholds. Today, some of the mega road, road projects started by the previous administration, such as Mau Mau Road and Kenol Sagana Dual Carriageway, have stalled. Right, and that's the story. You can read all the details on page four of the standard today. Looking on top here, where we have a teaser, to ban or not, why intoxicating Mogoka politics split leaders and Saudi to fund LPG gas plan that is on the business pages of a standard today, while record breaker eyes more glory on that. Page 32 is where you can read all the story there. And widen tax net, treasury told to as finance bill faces resistance, widen tax net, treasury told as finance bill faces res resistance, it seems more taxes will be coming your way. Tax and more tax and more tax. Accountants body say failure to broaden the tax base has seen the Kenya Revenue Authority consistently miss revenue targets while overburdening a small group of taxpayers. That story is on page eight of the standard today. HIV kids tender war rocks cancer health ministry. And you can read the story on page two and three. And on enterprise, why the youth and cashing in on farming, all tucked away on the Enterprise Magazine inside the standard today. Let's see what we have on the front page of the Daily Nation inside Haiti Police Mission Command. That is what we have on the front page of the publication today. Only officers aged below 40, 40 years will be among the 1,000 to be deployed. And uh, Deputy Inspector General of Police, Nur Gabo, is being considered to head the Kenya peacekeeping mission in Haiti or to Haiti, the nation has established. He will be assisted by a commander picked from either of three elite units, that is the Rapid Deployment Unit, RDU, Anti-Stock Theft Unit, uh, that is AS2, or General Service Unit, unit GSU, who will also lead the Kenyan, uh, will lead the Kenyan boots on the ground in the war-torn Caribbean nation. The story is on page four of the Daily Nation this morning, and we shall also be looking into this as well. On top, Kashakwa seeks new party amid fallout with Ruto. Deputy President Rigadi Kashakwa, Kashakwa should say, is in the process of acquiring a new political party as he split with President William Ruto or his split with President William Ruto escalates. Nation has established that Mr. Kashakwa is actively engaging officials of the new Democrats, that is TND, as he scouts 
for an option away from President Ruto's United Democratic Alliance, UDA. And that story is on page 8 of the Daily Nation today. How caretaker failed in bid to take over German employer's property. Appellate judge orders eviction of man who, a man who had attempted to shortchange his employer by calling ownership of the multi-million shilling property in, in Malindi. And Treasury proposes budget cuts for state, house and presidency. Funds slashed from the office of the president, office of the deputy president, the prime cabinet secretary and the state house will instead be relocated to coffee reform. Tree planting program, enhancement of the budget for foreign missions and state visits. That story is on page five of the Daily Nation this morning. The star inside lucrative packs Ruto gives or Ruto team gives Uhuru. Kanze rubbishes claims, says state out to financially cripple Kenyatta office. That is a rebuttal there. Documents show ex-president has eight high-end GK cars, 33 employees on state pay. And this story is on page four and five of the star this morning. Welcome, former President Uru Kenyatta, who is heading the African Union Election Observation Mission in South Africa. When he met with the National Operational and Intelli Intelligence Structure led by South African Police Service Major General Mashadi Selepe in Johannesburg last evening. And we'll give you greater details of his story, of course, not this one, but of course, the election in South Africa much, much later inside or in today's program. Varsity funding in crisis as Treasury cuts help budget for new students. You have a story on page six of the Star today. People Daily, budget, varsity students now left on their own. And uh, President William Ruto and Education says Ezekiel Machogu can be sitting here during uh, a meeting with Vice Chancellor or Vice Chancellors of Public Universities and Principals of Constituents' Colleges at State House Nairobi yesterday to evaluate the funding model introduced last year and the thousands of learners who sat KCSC examination last year may not join institutions of higher learning after the government drastically slashed funding for tuition and upkeep loans. And this story continues on page four of the publication today. Mandela Party threatened as South Africa goes to polls today. That is on page 17. And uh, stepping off negative energy with a pinch of salt. That is also in the paper daily this morning. Let's buckle down to some business where doctors uh, hit doctors hit patients with cash bills on e teams row. Medics now they're snubbing new tax system on data privacy breaches. Patients with insurance cover face double jeopardy. Doctors are forcing patients to pay medical bills in cash on continued snub of the Kenya Revenue Authority's electronic invoicing portal, exposing millions of insured customers to cut off or to um, customers to out-of-pocket spending despite 5.5 billion shillings monthly spending on health covers. Medical insurers who spoke to the Business Daily said some doctors are asking patients to pay in cash and then seek reimbursements from their insurers. Uh, you can follow the story there on page 4 of the publication today. Our city and bank was forced to pay 444 million shillings in Boch sale and machinery lifts imports to 697 billion shillings in the first quarter. Can general plans 800 million shillings more in cost and how caretakers plot to dispose to disposes how caretakers plot to dispose a German of his property flopped. I think there's a typo there. You can read the story on page 12. And APSA enlist IFC greenwashing fight. APSA Bank Kenya has enlisted the help of International Financial Corporation to weed out greenwashing projects in its climate financing portfolio. A good move there by APSA. You can follow the story on page 14. A lot of these reports, of course, also have a lot of uh, greenwashing in them. And that's a good salutary effort from them. Let's cross over to Tanzania, where government out to own commercial buildings elsewhere in Africa. The government has unveiled an ambitious project to build embassy and commercial buildings in several African countries as part of efforts to boost revenues for the Foreign Affairs Ministry. I have a story on page two of a citizen this morning. Also, UK unveils measures to boost horticulture growth in Tanzania. 
And Tanzania is now India's second biggest trading partner in Africa. Tanzania is now India's second largest trading partner in Africa after bilateral trade soared by 22% during the current financial year. Financially, you have it the story on page two of The Citizen. $7.9 billion, according to a statement from the Indian High Commission in Dar es Salaam, bilateral trade volumes have increased by that figure by May the 27th this year from 6.48 billion shillings, billion dollars, I should say, during 2022-2023 financial year. Samir's visit, that is President Samir Suluhu Hassan's state visit to India boosted bilateral relations and cooperation between the two nations. And you can follow the story on page two, as I've mentioned. Also, how deep sea fishing will be monitored more closely is on page three of the publication. In Uganda, now government is planning, um, new government plan on head teachers Sparks APRO. There's a tinderbox here waiting to explore the Prime Minister Robina Nabanja. Sparks public furor with a disclosure that a policy is in the offing to compel children of head teachers at government schools to study at the same institutions in order to guarantee quality <laughs> education. All right. Professor Dr. Obongi, what do you think about that? All right. So if you were a head teacher huh, in uh, Kabingwa High School, yes. it's also used your son or your daughter, she has to study there so that you can actually make sure the quality of education there is, is up to par. It makes sense, uh, but not necessarily. You, you can then end up uh, uh, just ministering to your son and forget about the rest. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> no, but uh, you see, now that you think it's the quality of education, it means uh, it's really up the ante. Oh, oh well, so, it, so that, uh, it, it, has... it, uh, it makes a lot of sense, uh, yeah. uh, really, uh, because uh, you, you find um, people managing institutions, they, they don't have their kids there. Uh, you're in a public university and uh, your kid is not there and, uh, uh, you, you know, it, it makes a lot of sense. Right, that is the Daily Monitor. Don't beat opposition. Otafire tells new police. That is uh, the Daily Monitor in Uganda. And you can see this is uh, Abbas Biakagaba becoming the ninth Inspector General of Police since the NRM Center to power. In 1986, the Minister of Internal Affairs, Major General Kahinda Otafire, has directed the new police chiefs to stop abusing the political rights of the opposition figure. Looking at that profile picture, you might think, uh, who does he resemble? This um, uh, internal affairs minister. Uh, is it a Twoli, Dr. Mustafa? Um, no, no, it's... <laughs> no, there is some slight resemblance. No, uh, there's a slight resemblance the picture. Uh, yeah? Yes. Yeah, uh, and, uh, uh, he, he's suddenly speaking like a Twoli. The yeah. comes from <laughs> closer to Uganda, so the resemblance might not be accidental anyway. Right. This is the Daily Monitor in Same Uganda. Uh, in Rwanda, the RSSB to launch Ronan Fax 30 billion equity investment facility for SMEs. The fund will be domiciled in Rwanda with a target to launch it before the end of 2024. You have a story on page three. Kagame U.S. Congress delegation discussed Rwanda's transformation. And uh, you can see President Kagame here and nine members of the U.S. Congress led by representative of Arkansas, Bruce Westerman, who also serves as the chairman of the U.S. House Committee on Natural Resources, posing for a group photo during their meeting at a village, Oruguiro. The discussion focused on Rwanda's transformation in the last three decades, potential areas of partnerships, as well as issues of continental and global importance. That story is inside the publication. Rulindo Partners pledged to address housing issues for genocide survivors and also new UN report exposes DR Congo's continued use of FDLR as a proxy that is also inside the publication today uh, of the New Times. And the East African. Biden's plan to eclipse Chinese influence in East Africa U.S. elevates Kenya to pivotal position in trade, security, and diplomacy with funding for an expressway along China build SGR military hardware uh, debt relief. You have a story on page four and five of the publication 
this week. We shall be looking at this as well with our panelists. Rwanda fire off lights aren't coming. With the UK going to polls in July, the migrant scheme may never get off the ground. That is the latest uh, information on the Rwandan asylum there. That is between the UK and Rwanda Asylum Pact, which may never lift off the ground as it is right now. The polls looming. And Somalia's town picks up pieces. A doubly a violent, ranked region whose rebirth AU forces have midwifed. You can follow the story in page 89 of the publication today. Let's leave it at that. We'll give you more details much, much later in the course of the program. But I just want to introduce the voice of Dr. Mustafa Yusuf Hassan, who is a conflict and uh, resolution expert, and also Dr. Kenna Bonge, historian from the University of Nairobi, will be joined by Farah Malim, who is also the member of parliament for the DAB and uh, international affairs analyst, and the Professor Mashar Munene as well, who is a historian. Dr. Mustafa, good to see you. Good morning. Good morning, Dibal. And thank you for joining us. Also, Dr. Kenna Bonge, thank you for joining us. Morning, Intival. All right, so what is uh, up your collective sleeves as far as uh, global affairs is concerned, as far as uh, uh, also uh, geopolitics is concerned? What has been on your radar? Lately, South Africa goes to the polls today. NC seems to be uh, not at a very comfortable place as far as uh, the 30 years of reigning is concerned. It seems somebody will upset the apricot going by the polls. And uh, Ramaphosa also. Uh, might be twiddling his thumbs in anxiety as far as uh, the elections is concerned. I don't know, we'll be looking keenly into that, but you can just give uh, a cursory uh, statement or a, a remark on that as well. I th thank you, Dibal. I think one of the, one of the major um, um, undertakings um, uh, last week mm -hmm. was the head of state, Kenya's head of state visit, to, state visit to the United States of America. And that has a lot of geopolitical implications for Kenya mm -hmm. and for the global south and Africa in particular with the uh, Kenya uh, being considered for the designation of a major non-NATO ally. Um, but above that, what we are seeing is that it, they, an emerging leader um, um, uh, in the global south in Dr. Ruto. Mm -hmm. And uh, we could as well be speaking of an emerging uh, Ruto doctrine of uh, inclusive prosperity. After having these discussions within Kenya on class differences um, in the context of the hustler politics, um, I think out there, Ruto, if you keenly watch his speeches, he is speaking about inclusive prosperity. Uh, he is keenly speaking about the positive sum game that this global south and the global north can prosper together. Mm -hmm. As opposed to the zero sum game, which is always that uh, someone has to win. And, and, and that is what has taken the world, where someone has to win always, someone has to lose, has taken the world and made the, uh, 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 the world become a much, much more challenging place to live in. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, uh, Dr. Kenan Bonge. Yeah, well, I, I think um, if ANC loses in South Africa, uh, it seems to be, to be actually a trend across the, 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 the continent where uh, popular voices are increasingly coming to the fore and uh, challenging the, 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 the status quo. Uh, you know, ANC is faced by uh, enormous challenges ranging from uh, providing the requisite infrastructure to the country. Uh, of all the countries, uh, uh, power supply in South Africa is becoming a problem, water, and many basic uh, uh, things. So they have helped ANC to be unpopular and to be caught in this wave, and Mustafa has just mentioned it, of um, popular uh, 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 politics. Uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised completely uh, to see Malema uh, coming up uh, in, 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 in South Africa. I don't know what that portends for, for the continent, uh, but we have seen what has happened in, in, in in Kenya right here. We are seeing what is happening in a number of countries in West Africa where um, young, uh, more popular, uh, populist uh, leaders are coming to, to, to power and promising all this inclusive leadership, uh, which sometimes <coughs> 
confront the traditional problems that uh, the continent has faced, particularly with our relationship with the global, uh, global north. Mm -hmm. so, so South Africa is a country to watch, uh, not, not just because of um, uh, the, the, the challenges it's going through and the elections, uh, but also because of its stance uh, in the Middle East crisis, the geopolitical dimensions that Mustafa was mentioning, uh, mentioning earlier. And if it continues with that, what does that mean, of course, to Kenya, uh, which has tended to uh, dance to the tune of Washington and London and many other Western capitals insofar as uh, the, Middle East, uh, the Middle East crisis is, is, is concerned? All right. Okay, we want to buckle down to uh, our stories this morning as well, just focusing on what is happening also in Mombasa and uh, where we've had uh, that story uh, since last week on the contentious issue of Mugoka, where Mugoka farmers and uh, traders can have a sigh of relief. Uh, after court in Embu, temporarily stopped the ban, use and sell of the plant in some counties. The conservatory order was issued by Embo High Court judge, that is Lucy Juguna. Let's listen in. koti imesema ya kwamba kwanza yale makataa ya gafana yasifanyishwe kazi na tunashukuru koti kwa sababu ya hiyo uh, pamoja na hayo ningependa mimi kuuliza kama the chairman of the chamber of commerce hapa embu ya kwamba sisi sote tu, tuanze ma, ma, uh, makubariano mwanzo ningependa tuanze kitu inaitwa mediation mediation ni mahali ambapo tunatafuta uh, ni kipi ambacho kine, kimefanya yule gavana wa Mombasa kufikiria mgoka sio kitu mzuri tuna sisi tu, tupeleke njia yetu ya kusema ni uh, njia ya kuanjiri vijana wetu na pia ni njia ya kutafuta chakula yetu ya kila siku na kuna watu wengi wameajiriwa na hii mgoka kuna watu wa Mombasa kuna watu wa Kirifi pia wataita Taveta na watu wa Embu hata county zingine kama Tharaka Nithi na Kirinyaga Kwa hivyo tungependa tutafute njia mwafaka ya kukubaliana ya kwamba sio lazima iwe koti imetulazimisha sisi kufanya biashara ama ilazimishe Mombasa kukubali ya kwamba mgoka inaweza uzwa pale. Minoel President William Ruto has uh, ordered of course uh, the Ministry of Agriculture to begin the discussions with the stakeholders in Mira and Mugoka business in order to resolve the current standoff caused by the ban of sale of the use of Bogoka in Mombasa and uh, other counties. Let's listen in. There has been a hue and cry following a move by Mombasa and Kilifi counties to ban the sale and use of Mugoka in the two counties. In a bid to fight for the continued sale and use of Mugoka, leaders from Embu County, where the crop originates, held discussions with President William Ruto last evening. During the meeting, Agriculture Cabinet Secretary Mithika Linturi told the President that Muguka is a scheduled crop in accordance with the Crops Act 2013 and the Mira Regulations 2013. He said the two pieces of regulation were passed by the National Assembly and the Senate with the concurrence of the Council of Governors. But even as the Embu leaders fought for Muguka, which is an economic lifeline for Embu farmers, a group of religious leaders in Cliffy County have joined the fray, backing the ban of the crop and asking other counties to follow suit. These, the religious leaders said, will help protect future generations. They have also advised Muguka farmers and traders from Embu County to find alternative ways to earn income and abandon the Muguka plant. Meanwhile, the Kenya Tobacco Control Alliance Kitka has commended coastal counties for their decision to ban the sale of Mira and Muguka, citing the substances' detrimental impact on the youth. 
Ketka Chair Joel Gitali urged the government to extend the ban nationwide and classify Mira and Muguka as illegal drugs, similar to marijuana and heroin. He also called on county assemblies to enact and enforce laws aimed at curbing drug abuse, emphasizing the need to protect children and ensure a drug-free population. Hii ni mimea ambayo haistahili kushugulikiwa. Hata serikali na hapa jaribu kuonyesha itimira ni baadhi ya mimea ya kuleta fedha. Tunahakikisha ya kwamba tunawambia watu wetu wa Kenya ya kwamba mira na tumbako ni vitu ambavyo havina kesho. These are the two crops that have no future. Muslim clerics from Garissa have called on governor from northern Kenya counties to follow seed and ban Muguka in the region. The Muslim religious leaders led by Garissa Sukem chairman Abdullahi Salat say that the Mira and Muguka business had been led to thrive for far too long ruining the lives of thousands who use the stimulant. <laughs> Nimemaliza rasimali ya watu yetu na ni um, inaongeza hata mambo ya security. Ndio unakuta kila wakati wale magaidi huwa wanatumia hizi vitu. Na hizi magadi zinapita msituni kuwapelekea. But in Kwale County, the county government has said it will not ban the transport, sale and use of muguka. Governor Fatuma Achani says the move is based on lack of a national law that criminalizes the practice. She however says that she does not support Muguka conception. Tunaungana na wengine kupiga vita utumizi wa Muguka. Of course, atutoweka ban kwa utumizi wa Muguka kwa sababu ya kisheria. Meanwhile, President William Ruto will meet leaders of four counties including Mombasa, Embu, Kilifi and Taita Taveta next week to discuss concerns and way forward. Catherine Imurogate, KTN News, Nairobi. All right, kuja tu. Kuja tu. Keep coming. That is the Mogoka there and the debate, the coastal counties as well. As you can see, the president says... Kuja tu, kuja tu. The governor is pointing the other direction as well. And uh, we can see the debate is ongoing as far as the Mwuka is concerned. The president will be meeting the governors, of course. My friend, on this, you have beaten more than you can chew. And you can see everyone now. Is that a puff or, not, or someone is actually taking Mwuka? <laughs> <laughs> or that is a punch. <laughs> Some of the counties, uh, uh, you know, governors there are taking Mwoka. Uh, that's the debate currently. Also, powerful forces, UDA party polls is still, the elections are still ongoing. Is the ruling party practicing democracy or democracy, as Dano will put it? Right. Let's hear the voice of uh, Farah Malim. Good to see you, Farah. Good morning. Good morning to you. How are you? Very well. Uh, on Mwoka issue, I know you don't take Mogoka. You've, well, ne you've never tested Mogoka. I have never but tested, but it's a dangerous thing. It's a drug all over the world. Mira is a drug all over the world. It's banned all over the world. Scientific, chemical, toxicology, it shows. Mogoka. All of Mogoka and Mira. But uh, Uhuru would say he doesn't care because the Mount Kenya people are the ones who sell. And those who consume are the Muslims. So as long as these ones are the ones who are getting destroyed, where does it matter? In a nutshell, that's exactly what he said. I can't remember him saying I, I remember it in as many words. He doesn't have to say it exactly the way I'm saying. Yeah. Now, now, anybody wants, if, 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 if anybody in State House feels that Mboka is good, let them serve their guests in State House Mboka. <laughs> he was, uh, the, the place was the brewery when he was there, Uru. But why, why, then why don't you even take Mboka there? If it is such a good stimulant, take it there, use it. Central Kenya, mountain region has got a bigger market for this than anywhere else. But Uru is out of Hang on a minute. Uh, he's over there. No, no, he's out of no, no. the picture right you, now. You have, to go back. Of you have to go back to the genesis of this thing. It did not start today. Now, let me tell you. It's, it's been there progressively because uh, Meru's and everybody used this as a tool, even during Moi's time. I took a motion in parliament to ban this thing myself in 1993. The, 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 Mira, yes. The cell, the, what do you call the, 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 the growing... Everything. This is a drug, just like marijuana. And, and uh, the Kanu members of parliament were mobilized because Kolweo, Kalweo, I, hope, I think he's still alive, and 
as he was the minister at that time, was uh, one of the leaders of the Merus, I took a delegation to the president. Daniel to teach mm -hmm. So the Kanu members of parliament were whipped to shoot down that thing. Mm -hmm. And they shot it down, and I lost. But, but then the point is, we are not in the opium war when the British, because they had a bigger firepower and they had gunboats, were telling the Chinese, you must buy our drugs and give us the money. Are you getting my point? Mm -hmm. You must buy it. It's more or less like the opium war. People in power are using the power itself to force other people. I mean, we are not forcing other people, but the addiction is there, and my addiction is everywhere. Why are we fighting? Why are we fighting? Why is, uh, is, is uh, the deputy president fighting illicit brew in the central region, mountain region? Then it will be fair for us also to say, okay, we've never done it before. We will promote the, the use, the consumption, and all those things of that in other parts of the area. The other addictions. Addictions are addictions. Drugs are drugs. And you, you ban it everywhere. You replace this thing with a proper cash crop. But you cannot say just because, oh, no, no, you know, those guys are, those are not ours. Ours say where to. Uh, uh, what do you say in, 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 in your language? Where to? Tigaito. 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 Nisho Mari. Nimudo Mari. Nimudo Mari. Nimudo Mari. It's Mudo Mari. They are using it. So they can go ahead and use it. And who cares? We're getting the money. They can all perish if they want. And on the other hand, you're saying we're going to fight illicit brew. You get my point? It's a contradiction. It's a serious contradiction. It's a very, very serious contradiction. And let me tell you one thing. Yeah. If there is one, I don't care myself who is going to promote this. If the president is going to be promoting anybody else, we will make sure that it's not going to be sold in our areas. You get my point? We will mobilize our people, and it's going to be the biggest, the biggest political issue right now. Because you cannot say, because this thing is largely consumed in a given area, then you have no problem with those people. You know, let's even change the law now and, and make it legal because it's not our people who are consuming and there's a political capital to it. No, we will not accept that. Ibal, this will be a, one of the biggest political wars to be fought Absolutely. in this country, this Mogoka thing. Uh, uh, a Mogoka and Mira is, is not even legal. It's just a controlled substance in, um, in five, six countries. All the other countries have banned in Tanzania, Mira. it's bad, right? Next door here. In, you in, in, in Saudi Arabia, in the United Arab Emirates, you go to jail for life. Yes. If you're caught with a leaf. Yes, of Mira. Of Mira. Yes. You go to jail for life. This thing is a drug. And it's... it's the scientific it's, medical... Even Nakada has said it's a drug. And it's not a matter of the Ministry of Agriculture to do the mediation. In fact, the, the ministry that should be at the table is the Ministry of Health to tell the people that this thing is bad, is bad for people, is bad for this country, and it should be banned. If I had my ways, uh, Farah is at parliament, I think you can uh, raise another motion. Uh, if I had my way, I would, um, I mean, no car will be allowed, transporting Mogoka and Mira, be allowed to get into the areas that um, okay. I'm a leader in. Well, but uh, the, the debate has been that uh, in the coast uh, we have, uh, you know, other hard drugs that have never been contained. Why should we be particularly intent on, on Mogoka, which has been in existence for donkey years, and uh, the hard drugs that are actually uh, disrupting the, and the, the sobriety, impairing the judgment of the young men there, the young women as well, is not being addressed. So those, it, drugs, it, Dibal, those drugs are illegal, the cocaine and all. What we are saying is that we should make Mira and, and the Mogoka illegal. That should be the first step, not to promote it. You see what is happening in this country is that Mira and Mogoka is being promoted. Mm. And is being promoted by politicians, by leaders. Right. This is all for political expediency. Uh, Mira is a big business. Uh, Wilson Airport, we know what uh, it really, the currency there, many of uh, uh, the... The hangers there and uh, the airlines there, I mean, they, they ride on the back and survive on the back of Mira, uh, a trend. Muguka trade as well. I, I don't know what Professor Mashare will tell us. Have you ever tested Muguka, by the way? Just, I'm just curious. <laughs> <laughs> you can confess. Yes, uh, and, how <laughs> we'll try and how you had a redemption from it as well. And um, I have no intention. Or trying. <laughs> no, the um, yeah, Mugoka is a drug, and so is Mira. <laughs> and the issue is not that uh, it's a drug or Mira, is that it's been going on for a long time. 
to the point where it is normal. Normal. Um, the explanation. I think I, I, have, I have an issue with you, Michael. Let me try and sort out your mic a bit so that uh, yeah. Yeah, it's crackling on air. Yeah. I'll sort it out, then I'll get back to you. Uh, Professor, Professor Masharia is Papa. saying Mira is a drug. It's, the, it's just that it's been normalized in our societies. And what is normal should not be considered uh, legal. An illegality that is normalized cannot be legal. Mm -hmm. um, right. Uh, uh, Dimpal, I think uh, <coughs> uh, you can see around the table, uh, this is a very emotional... Uh, extremely emotional issue uh, and uh, in a state of emotion uh, probably objectivity can easily be sacrificed um, uh, it's clear it's outright uh, from the scientific research that we have that Moboka uh, Mira is a drug they are drugs and uh, Dibal the, the, the impact of this becomes very clear if, if you have worked in Mombasa like I have done. Uh, I've, I've, I've done projects in, in, in Mombasa in both my individual and official capacity. And that's when you begin to realize how uh, uh, you know, dangerous the whole thing has become, uh, combined, of course, with other drugs in, 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 in the coast. Uh, just like an anecdote, I remember as uh, the CEO of Utali, I started a campus of Utali in Mombasa to train staff in hospitality. Uh, there are uh, literally no young men and, and young women in Mombasa, partially because of this drug, mm -hmm. uh, to partake of some of these opportunities. Uh, you, you find that majority of the people who partake of these opportunities are still from up country. And, and there's no problem with that. I'm mm. from this side of uh, Kenya. Uh, but then uh, it, it really behooves us to begin to have a very serious conversation uh, on, on, on this. And uh, for me, the conversation we need to have is um, uh, what, what are the alternatives to our farmers in, in Embu and Mount Kenya? Uh, because uh, we, we can't continue like this. Mm -hmm. And, and uh, you, you know, we, we agree this is a debate between economics uh, and life and health on one, on, on one side. Uh, but then uh, what are the alternatives that the farmers in Embu, some parts of Meru, can be supported to mm -hmm. start? Because uh, I don't foresee um, this crop uh, having a future. Uh, given the consequences that it has had uh, uh, among our people generally. Uh, and then the second one, uh, when we are talking about uh, uh, the ban, how do we handle it in such a way that it doesn't go the way the rest of the drugs have gone? Yes, they are illegal, but they are with us. Cocaine is illegal. Uh, but it's with us. Oh, this brown sugar and all the stuff that our children uh, sniff, and, and of course adults, uh, are illegal, but they are with us. So how do we do it in such a way uh, that they don't go underground? Uh, because that is what normally happens, that uh, when you burn it, when you remove it uh, from uh, uh, you, you know, uh, the, the, the real market, it goes to the black market. Uh, it goes underground. And already you have started seeing uh, that uh, Mogoka is already being transported to Mombasa in, uh, in, in plastic containers. Do you see that? I've seen that in social media. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so let's have a debate that um, as we debate about burning it just like other drugs, it doesn't go underground. So I, I think we need to have a very sober, uh, a very balanced approach to this debate of Mogoka and Mira so that we don't face the backlash that we have seen from other, uh, other drugs, uh, you know, and, and many other practices. The, the example uh, I always talk about is uh, what we wrongly call FGM. Uh, you know, it's banned, it is illegal, uh, but then it just went underground in many communities who still find, quote, unquote, a value in the, in the practice. 
So, so I'm calling for a balanced debate, a sober one, uh, the effort of the emotions that I'm seeing, both among the farmers, the, the politicians, and everybody else. Mm -hmm. uh, let, let's have a conversation as a country and, and find alternatives for our farmers in, uh, in, in Mount Kenya, in Embu, uh, and, and let's convince them using science and many others, uh, other evidences that we have, uh, that uh, we cannot go that direction as a country. Right. Mm -hmm. Professor Bashari, back to you as well, just to get your comments. I hope the microphone now cooperates. Yes, yes. <laughs> Hopefully. Yeah, and say, no. it's been said. Uh, it's, it's yeah, okay. me, me, me ran I Muka. Been by Muka. <laughs> but is it Muka cartels sabotaging you? We also need to bring a different angle. In the last election we had here in 2022, one of the candidates was glorifying uh, Bangia. Yes. Okay. Uh, okay. Marijuana. And it's a trend in the world. The campaign to legalize marijuana is high gear. It's gone up to the United Nations. And prominent people have been known to say, let's legalize what? Marijuana. And some countries have gone, Supreme Court, I think in Mexico and other places, have come up and said marijuana is proper. It still remains a drug. And they're saying that it's, that it's impact or whatever it is, well, it's maybe is as bad as cigarettes or not worse than cigarettes. So if you accept cigarettes, then you should accept what? Marijuana. And the same, I can see the same argument in the Muguka and the Mira, they've been using it, it's around. If you accept cigarettes, you should also accept what? Muguka. Muguka. Now, is that a, the, the way the debate should go? The issue of illicit anything has been with us for a long time, only that sometimes the enforcement mechanism has not been very straight. Um, it's okay for um, Deputy President and his wife to be very uh, advanced in uh, fighting illicit drinks. Eh? And then they are very careful to say, we are not fighting illicit drinks. Eh? Mm -hmm. You can have your drink as long as it is legal, eh? but the illicit. So now moving Mwoka from being licit to illicit, both legally and psychologically or socially, is the, ta the challenge here. And it's going to be a difficult one. So if we have a national, an international trend trying to normalize marijuana, and you have this, to this movement saying this is still a drug, it's a good, going to be a big clash. It's beyond Kenya, actually. Who else uh, consumes Mira and, uh, Maria, and, in, and Mugoka outside the Kenya? See, they, they, they're doing it in Somalia. They're doing it in Somalia. Yemen, Yemen. 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 Just so, a few countries. Yeah. yeah, so you still, then you... Eritrea is Eritrea is legal. Eritrea is not. No, no. yeah. so, but there are some of those countries where they make money <laughs> out of it. And so the campaign will have to go to those places and not just to Mombasa and, uh, you know, and Kilifi, if it is to be properly sustained. Right, so, uh, but uh, this is all for political expediency, as we can see at the end of the day. So where do we really draw a demarcation line between the moral high ground and uh, the economic uh, well-being of some people? Uh, so, so it seems that uh, you're going to upset the apple cart, people are not going to have food, their schools are not going to be paid, but it's at the expense of the welfare uh, of another community. So even if the president is going to meet the governors, what do you discuss? What, what, what will you discuss? You yeah, that's what I'm asking. Half or 50% or 30% poison. <laughs> <laughs> what do you discuss about the consumption of poison? <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 what, what is there? Have you been taking it for so long? Yes, 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 yes. Well, well, you know, let me tell you one thing. Eh? The whole world cannot be wrong. The entire world you go to Britain, you go to Holland. Holland is a place where you can use marijuana right now. It's legal. Marijuana is, uh, is, is, is bang and the rest of it. They consume it in the streets. But Mira, no, because it's a much more dangerous drug. Mira is more dangerous than Bang. It's de more dangerous than Bang, and Muguka is even more dangerous than Mira. So none of those countries would allow that to be consumed in their own countries. But you know, let me tell you something. Eh? When you read history, you come, you, you know, there's always this. Uh, very interesting narratives. 
Right now, what you call the inner cities, black neighborhoods, is where drugs is most prevalent in the US. If you read history, you'll find that the FBI and CIA used to promote that. To make those the black race a degenerate race so that they cannot, you know, actualize their full potential in terms of their brains. Mutudo is probably watching this thing today. Told me one time there's a conspiracy against your Muslim children in Lamu. People who take the bang in there and take all the drugs in there are people who don't consume it themselves. And the reason why they do it, they have a wider, wider conspiracy. Destroy that race. So, so you, you can't. And you know, I'll, I'll tell you one thing. The late Haji but, told me. But that also is a conspiracy. Yeah, yeah, but it's there, it's there, but it's there. It's not a conspiracy. No, no, you can see it. For Mutudo. You can see it. Mutudo himself was in Nakada, as the chairman of Nakada. And Mutudo is, 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 is a very, is a suave, what do you call, politician. One of the best we had in the 10th parliament, and I was there. When it came to what, aflatoxin, mm -hmm. I, was, I was the deputy speaker that time, and I facilitated him to go and do all that investigation. And who are the people who were doing, who were selling us aflatoxin uh, maize? I don't want to mention names. You get my point? Even now, there are people who say that uh, the Mira business in, uh, to Somalia, there are very, very you know, senior people who are involved, who get their cut every month in terms of millions of dollars. So we will, we, will, we will mobilize the world, we will mobilize our country, we will mobilize our communities, and this is going to be the mother of all battles, all political battles in this country. Let me tell you one thing. Don't go out there telling me that we're going to destroy this race. Let them consume this poison. We don't consume it ourselves. And then you go out there, and the poison that your people consume, you are working day and night to stop it. The late Haji was a provincial commissioner in, this, in, in, in Rift Valley. He was even a DC. He was even a D, you know, all those things. Do you know before Moi came to power, the Kalenji nation was drunk nation. People used to go and drink at night in the bars when they got the tea, whatever, bonuses and the rest of it. To the extent they were using, I was told they used to use the, the elastic bands that you use for, for money. They will, they will put it here so that if they defecate on their own trousers, then it does not come out. <laughs> I mean, the nation was dead. People are having breakfast. Hang on morning. a minute, hang on a minute. Moi came, Moi came to power and decided this is a conspiracy against my people. And we, we agreed. And some of the people who stopped that completely, the drinking hours, the pop hours, everything, everything today, Rift Valley consumes less, what do you call it, alcohol, than, than almost every other region except the Eastern Province. You, you get my point? And, and Coast Province, particularly Kalenji Rift Valley. The rest was saved by the late president. Don't we have a responsibility to save every rest? The disease was <laughs> the rest, the rest was saved by, by uh, and that's when the school started doing very well. I mean, literally, literally. I mean, in terms of, in, ter in terms of, you know, and the good schools came up, Sacho, Kabarak, uh, Kabarak University, uh, you know, all those things. Uh, the ten, Kapsabet, you know, boys, and, and that, that right now, that is one part of the country where we have seriously sober people who are involved in nation building. Why do you want to go and reverse some of these things in other parts of the country? Why do you want to have, a, you, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. Why can't we do, and I was one person who followed these things from those days, and I was very happy that alcohol abuse in Kalenji and Rift Valley was put to a stop. And I, you, you get my point? And I want us to do something similar to that, to all these drugs in every other part of the country. You cannot be fighting a illicit brew, as he says, which was transferred to the mountain region, but you say, okay, the Muslims can cons keep on consuming Moguka, which is even a, a much more dangerous uh, 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 because they're not my people, you know what I mean? Eh? I don't care if their population goes down. I don't care if what do you call they get into oh, impotence. I don't care if they become a permanent underclass. No, but it, it's surprising how, have how, how this is taking a very sort of um, a Muslim profiling that you're actually trying to. It to, is to true put it because across. that's where the, right? the, the that's where the addiction is. The same way that we don't have issues of uh, of, of this illicit brew. Every community has got a certain addiction. So when, when the addictions that are there in Kisi, let's fight it to make sure that we save the Kisis. The addictions that are there in the mountain region, let's right. fight it. It, it need not take a Muslim angle. I mean, yeah. right. it, it's the same thing that is can, happening. Can we, circle back, can we circle back with that? Because sure. my music is up right now and I can see it's actually 7 o'clock on the nose. We want to take a short break. 
but it's actually stimulating um, even a bigger debate uh, regarding the drug menace that is here in the country and people are not really talking about. Uh, we had this war with uh, Nakada, Mutudo, we know as it is right now, but it seems the energy, the valve has flagged over the years. It has really tapered off. Maybe Mugoka issue on the row is bringing to bear a discussion that we need to actually address as a country when it comes to drugs and uh, many people have been adversely affected by this uh, the wipes, white substance, the mukai itself, you know you can be a family there and you have someone now in a rehabilitation center uh, trying maybe to just bring sobriety and to, to align their lives again, they're struggling with addiction and it's a conversation that we need to have as a country. Many people are not speaking about it. We know people around us who have been affected by this. Uh, very good, uh, intelligent young men as well that we know in this country that have taken that path. And it has been a path of destruction, teetering on the 